Well, we're going to go ahead and get started then. And, All right. Uh, well, welcome to the Medical Staff Voice Live. I'm Dr. Stan Froswig, Chief Medical Officer at Community Memorial Health System, and I'm joined today by Dr. Omet Fatemi, interventional cardiologist. Welcome, Dr. Fatemi. Hey, thanks for having me, Stan. It's good to have you here. Good I would like to, to thank you for joining us today so our medical staff and community can learn more about your practice. In order to do so, we have a few questions that will enlighten us and give us better insight to you and your specialty. First thing, what brought you to Ventura? What was your training? Where are you from? Oh, that's a good question. So I grew up in the uh, I grew up in the D.C. area. I've been mostly in the East Coast my whole life. I did some training in Texas. And then my sister had migrated out here. And my sister is a physician here locally. Uh, and then we migrated the rest of the family out. And I got this job here. And I've loved it ever since. And I love Ventura and everything about this area. Well, well that, that's a nice background. What exactly do you think the medical staff should know about the services you have to offer, the kind of procedures that you do, and kind of the ages that you treat? I know for a fact that you are our structural heart medical director. So what does that mean? Oh, well, thanks for asking, Stan. So uh, I'm an interventional cardiologist by training. So after medical school, I did uh, internal medicine residency, and then I specialized in general cardiology. Then I did additional training in what's called interventional cardiology. And the way I like to say it is I'm a, I'm a plumber of the heart. So I deal with the coronary arteries, I do stents in the coronary arteries, and I do structural heart disease. The majority of the procedures I do are coronary heart procedures. So if someone comes in with a heart attack, I take them to the, what's called the cardiac cath lab. I do what's called an angiogram or a heart catheterization. I look at their arteries, and if they have a blocked artery that's causing the heart attack, we put a stent in and we fix that immediate problem. Then in terms of the structural heart problems that we deal with, the majority of that is uh, aortic valve replacements. And that's been somewhat of a miraculous story over the past decade or so across the world, really, and we've been fortunate to bring that technology here locally. It used to be that aortic valve replacements were almost totally open heart procedures where you'd cut someone's breastbone and the surgeon would replace their valve. And for a lot of people, that's still the right answer. But for a good portion of people, and I think now it's the majority of people, we replace their heart valves, their aortic valves, minimally invasively. And what does that mean? So we, instead of going to the operating room, they go to the cath lab. Uh, and now we've gone away from even putting a breathing tube in people. We put them under max sedation. We poke a hole in the artery of their leg. We take a big tube up there and we place their valve. Over the past year, Stan, a lot of people have actually gone home the same day that they've gotten their heart valve replaced. And so it's been a pretty neat progression in terms of what we've been able to do there. Um, we have also do other minimally invasive procedures. We do something called a watchman procedure where people with atrial fibrillation or uh, an electrical problem of their heart, one of the big problems they may have is they have an increased risk of stroke. And the reason they have an increased risk of stroke is that blood clots can form. And the majority of the blood clots form in part of the heart called the left atrial appendage. Well, the Watchman procedure is a procedure where you plug that part of the heart. It used to be, again, that that would be done through open heart surgery and they put a clip on that part of the heart. Now we can do that by putting a hole in your vein, taking a catheter up through the vein, going across the heart and putting a plug in. And again, those patients go home the same day and they can be off of blood thinners within a couple months after doing that procedure. Um, so those are the majority of the procedures I do in the hospital. Also for young people who have strokes, there's a procedure called a PFO closure where we plug a hole in their heart in a different manner that helps prevent them from having strokes. And that's, again, a, patient, a procedure you can go home the same day, and people do very well after those procedures. Um, selfishly, that's some of my favorite things to do when I'm at work because it, there's, there's a nice feeling of gratitude and there's a nice reward after you do that. Once you treat someone's heart attack or you relieve their, atrial, or their aortic stenosis, um, there's an immediacy to it. At, when someone comes in in the depths of despair, when they've, they're in the midst of a heart attack, you take them to the cath lab, you open up their artery, they go from being blue to p 
pinking up and they're back to life and within a couple hours they're eating a cold tuna sandwich from the hospital it's it's really cool so that's that's something i really do enjoy about my career here well you know i remember just a couple years ago where you were actually the catalyst for starting our program up it didn't exist prior to that and so we're very grateful for that i know now that <clears throat> patients that i used to send down to los angeles to be treated are now <clears throat> being treated locally by you and it's really such a value to our patients. I, I did send a patient down not so long ago for a mitral clip. Sure. Is, is that in our horizon at all? So yeah, I, th I think so actually. So to, to go back to what you're saying before, it's, it's not just me. I think our community has done a nice job. We've really worked together well. The folks in our hospital have really done an outstanding job, whether it's the cath lab folks, the ICU and the ICU nurses, the, the respiratory therapists. I, I, honestly, my hat, my hat goes off to everybody. It's been a really nice collaboration and a really nice team effort. And, you know, everyone's doing a great job. The anesthesiologists have adapted so rapidly and they've done so much to help the whole thing along that they've done great. And Lamar and Jen, our two cardiac surgeons, have been outstanding. In terms of mitral clip, that, that may come down the road. What we've done thus far is we've actually replaced mitral valves percutaneously. Wow. And so the mitral clip, to kind of give you an idea, the mitral clip is a procedure they do where if someone has a very leaky heart valve, a very small subset of those patients can get a minimally invasive procedure to clip the two leaflets together. The good part of that is for a small subset of patients who are otherwise too sick for other surgeries, it works, but you're exchanging one problem for another in a lot of ways because you're creating a valve that's, that doesn't open very well to fix a valve that was leaking too much. What we've done in the meantime though is when we've had a few patients who are very sick who their valves failed, who had prior surgeries who their valves failed. And so what we were able to do with some creativity is actually replace their valves minimally invasively and with the help of our outstanding surgeons and anesthesiologists one patient in particular was put on what we call ECMO or complete life support and that was actually a, an outstanding story where um, the way you think of ECMO is you're virtually taking someone's heart and lungs and putting it outside of their body so they were complete on complete support we kept this patient alive for a few days got her to a place where uh, this patient was able to survive and then she, this patient was doing fairly poorly because her valve had failed and then we were able to put a new valve in and almost instantaneously after that this patient came off support and was alive and you know like you said maybe a little while ago we would have sent the patient down to los angeles but there's also a good chance that patient wouldn't have survived if we didn't have this technology and so i think there's a, there's a lot to be said about what we're able to do as a community locally we've all adapted and we've, we're really growing a lot and I gave you a mouthful to answer your question, but mitral valve technologies are coming, they're here, and we're going to continue to progress with them. Well, what you do sounds like the future is here, and really, uh, we're very fortunate to have all the techniques and uh, procedures that are really cutting-edge procedures. I agree, yeah. So uh, where is your practice located? I know you're in with a large cardiology group here in town. Yeah, so I work with Cardiology Associates Medical Group. Uh, currently our office, our main office is attached to the hospital. It's in uh, the medical office building, uh, 503 Venture, I'm sorry, 168 North Brent Street, Suite 503. So it's attached to the Community Memorial Hospital and we, that's where we see the majority of our patients. That's wonderful, thank you. You know, um, we've talked about a lot of heavy topics, so we know you must have a life outside of medicine. What kind of hobbies or recreational activities are you involved in? <laughs> Let's get to know you a little bit. <laughs> I like that. So my, my big thing now is I just love spending time with my kids. <laughs> I chase my kids around uh, anytime I have some free time. Uh, like I said my, when we were talking before, my son's a lot like me. He's, he's kind of a nerd and he likes, uh, he likes lizards. And so <laughs> we go out on trails, we go hiking a lot, and half my day with him is 
spending spent chasing lizards around and my daughter's very similar and we we do a lot of hiking and spend time together well and not only that but being uh, a beach community we have tide pools right exactly endless uh uh discoveries there <laughs> absolutely so now the final and uh, lightest part of our uh segment is a little thing we call this or that so okay. just stream of consciousness you don't have to think deep about it um what would you prefer have the ability to read minds or to be able to actually pre predict the future oh boy that's a great question <laughs> uh, uh i'd probably like to read minds more i kind of like to keep the future a mystery nicely said how about a private jet or private island Oh boy. These are great <laughs> questions, Dan. Uh, I'd go with a private jet, I think. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh free gasoline for 25 years or having your dream car. Oh, I think gasoline's in the past, Dan. I think <laughs> dream car is the way to go. Every I went to gas my car this morning and I was I was thinking, what am I doing? I just I'm wasting my time. I'm hurting the earth. I got to get an electric car, man. I think that's the future. <laughs> yeah. It's arrived. Yeah. Uh, would you prefer being a ninja or a pirate? Oh, this is a great question for my son. Oh my God, um, uh, I'd probably I'd probably be a ninja. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, and then, uh, president of the United States or a world famous surgeon? <laughs> uh, the president's too much pressure. I'd be a surgeon. Sure, go for yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I really appreciate that. Thank you for tuning in to learn more about Dr. Omid Fatemi. For more information on all the services and specialties offered at Community Memorial Health System, visit cmhshealth.org and be sure to like and subscribe for more from your community health system. Thank you, Dr. Fatemi. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate it. Welcome.